Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is Anna's newest laptop, the Magic Book R14 Snapdragon. So this laptop has a very eye-catching and clever hardware component. It is a webcam that is detachable. It is housed on the side of the laptop, so you can take it out from the side of the laptop and then snap it to the top to connect your webcam and then it's completely detachable, removable. In any other year, this component here would be the headline feature, would generate all the headlines already. But there's another hardware component in here that is maybe not as immediately interesting, but far more important and continues a sea change in the direction of portable computing, meaning laptops. So this laptop is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite. It's an ARM-based chip that is built on the same architecture as other smartphone chips like the Qualcomm Snapdragon, Samsung Exynos, or Apple's A chips. So this continues a trend of laptop makers moving away from Intel, which have been dominant in the laptop space, especially the Windows space for like at least the past 15 years now if not longer. Now I'll explain a little bit more in details this change and why that's important later for those of you guys who may not know, but I think a lot of you guys already know. But first let's take a look at the overall hardware. So this is yet another light and sleek laptop from Honor. It weighs 2.2 kg or about one pound and measures 11.5 millimeters thick or about 0.45 inches for Americans. So you have a 14.6 inch OLED display, 120 hertz refresh rate, 3K resolution. It is also a touchscreen panel, which is, I, I would say touchscreen on a laptop isn't a complete make or break a deal for me, but it is very nice to have because a lot of times when I'm editing videos or when I'm playing games, or even when I'm typing a long paragraph, it's just a little bit easier for me to stick my finger up to tap on the screen instead of needing to move my mouse cursor up like three paragraphs. The screen gets up to 700 nits in max brightness. So right now this is maximum brightness. I am outside under the sun, overcast day, and you can still see the screen pretty clearly. This panel also covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. However, one nitpick that I'm gonna have is that um, the screen is very reflective and glossy. Now, after having used laptops with a matte display, like the newest MacBooks, or phones with a matte display, using this outside is sometimes a little bit distracting because it does reflect light a lot. There are a decent selection of ports for a modern day laptop. So on the right side, you have a HDMI out, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a USB-A 3.2 port. On the left side, you have two USB-C ports, both are Thunderbolt, both are 3.2, and both will charge the 60 watt hour battery in here. And of course, on the left side is also where this detachable webcam sits. The cool thing is you can also snap on this webcam the other way. So that means this is one of the few laptops out there with a camera that can face forward. If you want to, you can have it face either forward or towards yourself. The webcam is 1080p. Unfortunately, I do find footage to be a little bit soft. It's not the sharpest 1080p video I've seen. Are you watching front facing camera footage with the Honor? Magic Book R14 right now. I'm in beautiful chunk chain right now, right? I'm still looking in the water. The keyboard is excellent. It is full size and the keys have 1.5 millimeter of travel. So that's more travel than on the MacBook. And when you're typing on this, you can feel the keys bounce up and down a little bit more than usual. The trackpad is large and precise. And just like on Huawei laptops, you have these gestures that you can slide your finger up and down the left side to adjust screen brightness or slide up and down the right side to adjust volume. And when you slide up and down, there's a vibration haptic engine underneath that will give you a sensation as if you're actually twisting a dial. It feels very nice and precise. You can also tap twice on the trackpad with your knuckle to grab a screenshot. Anyway, so now let's talk about the significance of Honor and Windows laptops moving to ARM Silicon. If you already know the history behind that, you can feel free to jump ahead like two minutes or so, but I think a lot of people still don't know why this matters. So basically, in the entire world of consumer computing, there are just two sets of silicon architecture. There's x86, which I believe was invented by Intel, and the AMD also licensed it. So that's why AMD and Intel are the only two companies that can release x86 processors. And then there's also ARM silicon. So ARM-based chips are designed to be lean and efficient. Now, while it is efficient, it does come with a ceiling on um, how much power it can output. Now, x86 processors are designed to be able to output 
maximum power that technology allows, but it is also very power hungry. So nowhere as efficient as ARM chips. So for about like 10, 15 years, throughout the entire 2010s, the co entire computing industry operated by just one rule. So basically, if you're making a portable handheld device like a phone or a tablet, you would go with an ARM chip because they're efficient. But if you're making something that requires a little bit more power, like a laptop, a computer, you need to go x86, Intel or AMD. So that's why Intel and AMD had a monopoly on the entire laptop market up until four years ago when Apple shocked the industry by announcing that they were going to move away from Intel and develop its own Apple Silicon based on ARM architecture. When Apple announced that four years ago, a lot of people were skeptical because ARM chips weren't supposed to be powerful enough to run proper laptops. But Apple proved everybody wrong. Apple Silicon, since the first generation, offered power that were almost as good as the best Intel processors, but they were a lot more efficient. And then, you know, once Apple got the ball rolling, then other companies realized, you know what, we should try it too. And that's what led Qualcomm to work on the Snapdragon X Elite. Now, it took a couple of years, but the Snapdragon X Elite is here, and it has already launched in several other laptops from Dell and Asus. And now Honor is the next one to use this chip. And by all accounts, Snapdragon Dragon X Elite lives up to the same performance that Apple Silicon brought. In terms of maximum power output, it still can rival like the best Intel processors, like maybe not beat it, but at least get close to it. But at the same time, it is a lot more energy efficient. And this is definitely the best battery life I've gotten from a Windows laptop I've ever tested. Now there's one more obstacle that ARM-based laptops has to deal with, other than just um, if it can output enough power as Intel chips. because x86 and ARM chips are completely different architecture. Software developed for one cannot run on the other, at least not natively. So that means for an x86 software to run on an ARM chip, it has to run on emulation, like a translation language to run that software. So you're going through an extra tier before you can run that software. Now the problem for the Honor Matchable R14 and most other Windows laptops is that almost most Windows software is designed for x86. So that means Almost everything you download from the Microsoft Store running on here, it's going to run through a translation layer. Now, there are some Microsoft apps that have already converted to ARM, like all the native apps that come with the laptop. But anything you install on the side, it's going to be an x86 app running on a translation layer. So that means no matter what, you're not getting the absolute pure performance because it's running through a translation layer. The good news is I found performance to be very good. Most of the games I've downloaded so far ran perfectly fine. CapCut runs fine. A lot of software has been running, like I can't even tell it's running on a translation layer. Performance has been pretty good. But I have encountered little bugs here and there. Like for example, a Strill VPN, which I needed to use in China, would not run on here. It kept popping up that it's for x86 system and would not run on this laptop. And also, one game, uh, Raid Legends, would not run here. Same thing, it was like, it had a message that said it's for x86. So you're not gonna get full 100% compatibility yet, so maybe if you wanna play a save, you may wanna wait another year or two before you jump on the ARM Silicon bandwagon for a Windows machine. But I do think that change is gonna happen because ARM Silicon just gives you so much more battery efficiency. For my usage, which is heavy productivity, like 10 Chrome apps open, typing words constantly, streaming Spotify in the background, watching YouTube videos. I could use this for like three hours straight and the battery will drain just like 17%, 20%. That's very good for a Windows laptop. Like usually for a Windows laptop, three hours of use would drain like 40%, I want to say, maybe even 50%. So Snapdragon X Elite itself is a 12-core silicon with a prime core running at 4 gigahertz, with the rest being 3.5 gigahertz. So this is not like the most powerful configuration, but like I said, performance has been fine. And you can see benchmark numbers are pretty respectable too. Now, another benefit of ARM silicon is that performance stays mostly the same whether it is plugged into power or completely unplugged running on battery. Again, that is not the case on Intel laptops. Intel laptops, if you run benchmarks with the laptop plugged in and unplugged, you see the numbers are much lower when it's unplugged. That is not the case on the Honor Magic Book R14. You can see benchmark numbers are consistent whether it is plugged in or it is not plugged in. The Snapdragon X Elite also features Qualcomm's Hexagon MPU, which allows it to run multi-model, large language model AI on device. 
So to that end, you're able to run Microsoft Copilot here, obviously. So you can ask Microsoft Copilot some complex queries, like, hey, help me plan a bachelor party. Or you can ask it to generate an image. Although I find the image generator to be not as good as what Google, Google's or AI can generate. Also, Honor has some AI features of its own. That's because this software runs uh, Windows 11, but it has some Honor software on top. So you can, for example, use Object Eraser, like the stuff that you can do on smartphones, remove stuff from the background. You can do that here. You can also apply a filter to a webcam, but the filters, in my opinion, do not look that good, but they work and it works in real time. Now, speaking of Honor software, you can also connect this laptop seamlessly to Honor smartphones. Once connected, you can mirror the screens two ways. So you can mirror your phone screen on the laptop screen, or you can mirror your laptop screen on your Honor phone screen if it's a foldable phone. It only works on the Honor foldable phone, not a slap phone. Now, ultimately, is the Honor Magic Book R14 with Qualcomm better than the Honor Magic Book 14 with the Intel processor? Um, I can't say for sure because I didn't get to test that one. And also, right now, because all the software here is running through a translation layer, so maybe the software running on the Intel machine will still run at a little bit higher peak performance. But I can say right now, performance here is perfectly fine, more than good enough for me. Now, if you're a heavy PC gamer, you're still going to want to use an Intel machine for the foreseeable future. But if you are more someone that uses a laptop for productivity, a digital nomad, I think ARM laptops are definitely the future and the way to go because you get so much better battery life and just performance efficiency. You don't suffer a performance dip just because you take this to a coffee shop. Now, this laptop is not cheap. I know a lot of the Europeans are going to complain because it's priced at 1,700 euro, 1,700 euro. That's basically like 1,900 US dollars. But I do think you're getting a flagship screen, a bleeding edge ARM silicon, great keyboard, great trackpad, overall great design overall. So I don't think it's necessarily overpriced per se. The good news is if you buy this in Asia, like Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and Hong Kong, you should be able to get it quite a bit lower than 1,700 euro. I'm pretty sure the price like in Asia converted will be closer to like maybe like 1,300 euro, something like that. So anyway, this is the Honor Magicbook R14 a big first step for Honor laptops and for Windows computing as a whole. I hope you enjoyed this video, man. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. I have a lot more coming. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.